on the front end and integrate it with the back end as well. So on Slack, we'll go ahead and send you guys the repo I created. It kind of gives you a step-by-step -step on everything. And let me go ahead and share my screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start creating the back end just in the meantime. I'm going to do the virtual environment. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and create the app as well. install all righty so then i'm gonna create the front end folder So uh, whenever you guys try to look up Google Auth on how to do it with React, there's a lot of methods that have been deprecated already. So I kind of had to go and create this by using the actual documentation and kind of doing a custom view of it. Um, so first you have to go to the Google API console and I have it linked right there. You go to create a new project. Let's just call it yeah, my project 21263. Can you guys see this by the way or no? Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. So create. Mm -mm -mm. Awesome. So I'm gonna go to that project real quick. Then you go to the hamburger menu. You go to the API and services. And then you go to OAuth consent screen. And this is kind of Google's way of making sure if it's going to be internal or external. Since we're we're not in an organization, we're going to do external. Go to create. Just call it whatever you guys want to call it. So I'm going to do web sign in. This right here will just be your regular Gmail. Um, if you have an app logo, you do a logo right here. Your domain, if you're actually going to deploy it on AWS and so on. Authorized domains as well. Um, this right here is just your email address again. Let me continue. Cool. So the scopes right here, this is what you're going to be pulling from the from the actual API itself, right? So for the most part, we just want the email and the profile, but you can guys can just like look at the rest of these and see exactly what else you want from there. But for the most part, we're just going to do this for now. So update that, save and continue. So the test users, we're gonna do our Google email. That way we're able to do that in the testing environment. Oh no. Wait, save and continue. And then your little summary. So now you go back to dashboard, you click on credentials now. And this is where you're going to start creating your OAuth client ID. It's going to be a web application, web client one. That's fine. So we need a URI and a, uh, a redirect URI and a JavaScript origins. So before Google used to just let you do like the localhost 8000 or just localhost alone, but they want localhost. And then they also want 
but I must have wrote one second. Let me look at this real quick. Sorry about that. My project credentials. That is correct. What do you mean? You need the uh, slashes. Oh, that's what I forgot. Thank you. So then you also do the um, the port as well. So fifty one, fifty one, seventy three. Local. Local. And then do the same thing on the redirect. So then this one, now you create that. Cool. And this is where you get your client ID. So we'll put that aside for now. Go back to VS code. So the next part is they want you to load the Google Platform Library. And that's kind of like their own internal API, what they have. So you go to front end, source. You go to the index.html and right under the meta tab, you're going to go ahead and put that script tag in there. That You're done there. Let's go ahead and create the file. We also have to go ahead and uh, install the JSON Web, to web Token Decoder. So it'll be JWT Decoder. JWT Decoder. Cool. Cool. So now that we have all the dependencies installed, we have everything going on. We're going to go ahead and start coding it out. Um, we're going to create a, we're going to use state to create a user. So let's go ahead to explore default function. Ah. We're going to do the, the handle callback response. Response. So we're just going to put a console log right here that we, we can actually see the token we're getting back. On stock credential. JWT decode response dot credential. And then we're going to console log the user object as well so we can see what we're getting back from there. We're going to set the user. User object. And then document. Okay. We're going to start using the Google library as well right here. So we're going to get their signing div. Which is basically their button.
Now we're going to do a logout, um, I mean, a sign out handle. Sign out on event. So we're going to put it back to user. Now we're going to do a use effect. Fetch our data. So wait. Fetch. And I'm gonna just go ahead and just put in the URL I have right here, which I'm gonna set up on the back end right now shortly once we're done with this. Second, come right here. To do the cross origin stuff. So the reason why you have to use the cross origin opener policy is because you're gonna have a cores issue regardless. Um, and that's just kind of a way to get rid of it. Fetch data equals open up a mess this up, I think. Sync. Oh no, I'm just let me just copy it real quick. Where am I missing up here? So then the const data equals await response.json. And then Cons client ID equals data dot client. Okay, cool. And then we're going to also now use the Google library again. So Google, Google dot, uh, dot account dot ID dot initialize. ID and then the callback would be the handle callback response. Then we're going to do the Google dot account dot ID dot render button. So this right here, the render button, you can actually go to the Google branding guidelines and it'll show you like different ways you could do it. And like what theme you want, whether it's like a light or a dark theme and stuff like that. Render button. So document dot get element by ID. We're gonna do the sign in div again. Sign in div. Yeah, we're going to do the theme. Theme would be outline. Size would be large. And now we're going to fetch our data. Okay. 
this. Now we're going to do a return. So now we're going to go ahead and create the div. Last name is equal to. Oh. We're going to do div ID equals sign in div. And then. Object dot keys user dot length zero and then button on click. We're going to do the event. Sign out in sign out right here. Now, if we have a user, we'll do this. We'll return a div. Why is that my saying up? A div with a image source equals the user dot picture. We'll do alt equals set and then H3 would be user dot name. Close out that div. And cool. So this is pretty much all the code for the front end what you need. We'll just put this on the app.jsx. Okay. Let's save that. Now, before we go ahead with that, let's go ahead and do the back end stuff real quick. So we need to go ahead and do a pip install of the Django course headers. For a second, I activate the virtual environment. I did get deactivated. Course headers. All right. You go to your settings. Will you add that as an installed app and also the authentication? Course headers. We also have to add the middleware for that as well. I'm going to just copy and paste that real quick. And then just for safety reasons, I'm going to go ahead and add the allow origins as well. Well, because that's how I kind of did it on my side and it worked for me. So that's all you need to do for the settings over here. And now let's go ahead and start creating the views and the authentication. Right. 
Stoller. Django Press Framework. Is a REST framework? I forget real quick. You might be REST underscore framework. Can't remember. Yes. Yeah, Is it REST underscore framework? I'm pretty sure. Django, give me one second. Yes, it is. Good. Then I'll go back to the views from REST framework. The response import API view. Oh, no, API response. Response. Press framework dot decorators. We're going to import the API view right here. And then add API view. We're going to do a post because that's what Google requires. Post that it was get Google. Client ID client ID on there. I put just to put like a OSN like a dot env, but I'm gonna just kind of hard code this now just for a little lecture purposes. And let me get that client ID real quick. Response equals response client ID. Be right there. Response. Now over here, I had to do another course thing. Since you do get a pop-up, um, I was having issues with that initially. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. Policy equals thing origin allow pop-ups. And now we return the response. Cool. That's it for the view. We're going to have to create a URL quick. So URL.py. Now we use import a Google Client ID. And I'll just paste that right there. And then we go to our project URLs and we'll add that as well now. We're going to have to add include to this. Add that. And cool. We pretty much have everything going now. So let's just start at the back end. I don't know. Let's go back so the Python finish up pine run server. Ooh. Oh, I can do my migrations. Run server, then we'll start at the front end.
I'm having an import issue right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm having an issue right now. Give me one second. This is just working. Line 36. I might have misspelled something. Count. There you go. Cool. So now you get to sign in with Google right here. It'll populate the pop up screen. You click on your test user and then you do confirm. Cool. And then here is the response you get. Now, something was wrong though at the end. JW. I thought I installed it, didn't I? I'll go ahead and do this real quick. NPM install. Okay. I'll run dev. Oh, I guess I had to install it again. But do this. Do this. I'm having issues with that. Is uh, it JWT dash or just JWT? Well, right here is just a JWT. Because you have a JWT capital, you have a camel case there on the import. That's why. I don't know if it's. Let me try it out. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. And there you go. So you can sign out. We'll just reset it right there. Sign in. Choose your account. And then you get your email. You get the family name, given name your token code obviously right here and so on. Now, what I'm working on right now is currently is sending this token code to my backend so I can store user as an actual user and store that into the database for, for, for future references. Does anybody have any questions? When you're doing it, well, I guess the only thing you need to change for like, I don't know if you've done it yet, but for um, um, when you deploy is the, like the local host to your like your IP address and all that. Yeah. So if you remember, whenever you went to the, whenever you're creating the OAuth and send screen, it asks you for a domain name. That's where you have the domain name. Okay. So that will be just to kind of like on your local part, that's where you're just kind of doing your local host 5173 and so on. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if this makes sense, but like if a third party is doing that auth, can you just like make up like an algorithm or something for like to store in your database? And it's like you just know that it's unique because it was a user that created something and it's not necessarily the token, but it's something you can store in your database to reference, I guess, for users. I don't know if that's like a way around the token auth situation. No, so um, ish, the way they have it is they actually want you to send that token back to your database and store it. It's all in the docs I sent you guys, the the client ID one. There's actually like a developer console docs on there where you can actually see everything they have going on. I'll actually, uh, I'll go ahead and just attach it to that repo if you guys want to read into it. Anybody else? Oh, yeah, good. Oh, well, thank you guys. All right. Thanks, Jesus. Yeah, uh, that's great. Stuff is pretty complicated to 